Would you like to charge your car for free? Keep watching in this video, I'm going to tell you a lot of the information you're going to need to know about how to get a free charge of your electric car in Australia. G'day everyone, I'm Tim from Bozzy Garage and we are going to talk about public charging. Now if you're new to the game and you don't really know how to get a free charge, well I'll tell you what, keep watching, we'll try and find out. The first thing that we need to cover is the difference between a tethered charger, which is like that, and an untethered charger, which is like that. A tethered charger, uh, the only ones I've ever really seen are manufactured by Tesla, Tesla wall charger. The reason for that is they're actually quite good value, they're only about $750 I think Australian to buy at the moment. Most of the ones that you'll find out at shopping centres will be unlocked, which means that any car with a Type 2 uh, charging plug should be able to use them. And most of the more recent EVs like the current Teslas um, 3 and Y, MGs, BYDs, Polestars, etc. You'll all be using a Type 2 cable. Um, so yeah, have a crack at those Tesla chargers if they're available in a shopping centre, plug it in, you should be good to go. Uh, however, we are also seeing a lot more of the untethered chargers. Now, untethered charger, that doesn't have a cable connected. It's just a main electrical box or whatever you want to call it, which means that you're going to have to bring your own cable. Uh, now, some of these untethered chargers are actually, mm, I would call it unmanaged, which means they're just like a PowerPoint. You just plug your cable in, you push a button, you're good to go. Several of them are actually managed chargers. Uh, for example, the local Woolies I stopped by in Heidelberg in Victoria, they use a Charge Fox. Now, Charge Fox is interesting. You have to register an account with them, and I'll go through a list. Actually, maybe I'll just do it now. You should get a Charge Fox account, maybe an EV account, uh, Jolt, um, and I think Ampol and BP are a couple of new ones too, which you can also go for. Uh, just look for the apps online, you can go and register, should be free to register anyway. The, uh, the Woolies, which has a Charge Fox, um, they've, got, oh, they've got seven or eight of them, which is great, but you actually need the app. In order to register that you're there at their particular charging terminal, push a button to start. Um, it's free, mind you, but uh, you, you still need the app in order to do that. So get those apps, you should have them on your phone, go for it. Now the next question that you're going to have is, which cable should I actually buy? Because there are a number of them out there on the market. And basically, if you go with a Type 2 to Type 2 connector, uh, you should be right. But there's a little bit more to it than that. Some of them will have a rating of 7 kilowatts, 11, 22. Uh, some will be 2.5 meters, some will be 5. Uh, actually, I'll show you the cable I've got here. I bought this one uh, last year when I didn't really know much about public charging but I knew I needed a Type 2 cable. Fortunately, it's been pretty good for me so far, but there's a little, look, it's on the short side, it's two and a half meter cable. I've not had a problem with it yet, but the thing is you can't really get an extension cord for these. So if I wanted a longer one, I just have to buy another five meter one. And look, I might do it anyway. I'll put one in both of the EVs that I've got. Type 2, if I hold it up for you here, you can see there's a difference in terms of size of the connector and what kind of plugs go in. So you can only really put it in one way. The smaller one here, that is the one that's going to go into your uh, charger, whether it be Charge Fox EV or, or whatever the box is called, the smaller one, okay? And then the other end, well, guess where that goes? That goes into your car, and that looks just like the mobile charger that um, maybe your uh, car company's provided to you, or maybe they didn't and they want you to buy it again. <coughs> Tesla! Right. So, what cable should you get? Look, to take the difficulty out of it, I've just put a link in the description below. Uh, if you click there, it'll take you to Amazon. It'll take you to the recommended cable or cables, which I'll put in there. Uh, and if you purchase through the link, you'll be supporting the channel and I'd appreciate it very much. Plus, you'll also know that you'll be getting the correct cable for 99% of the electric cars out there. Do your own research still. But, you know, if you've got a plug that looks like that in your car or plug into your car, that's going to be a Type 2. Type 2 to Type 2 cable people, okay? Now, let's say you're there at the shopping centre, you've managed to plug in. Plugged in there, you might be wondering, well, at this shopping centre, I only got 4 kilowatts, and that one I got 7, and then that one I got 11. Um, how much charge rate will you get? Well, we talked about tethered versus untethered before, that's one with a cable without. We should probably talk about AC charging versus DC charging as well. AC charging, uh, alternating current, this is like the 240 volt plug you get at your house and this is what we call, mm, let's be technical, destination charging. 
uh, at a public uh, shopping center. These ones at shopping centers, they're also on AC as well, but usually at a higher rate than what you get at home. So if you start at the very basic level, you plug your 10 amp uh, charger into your outlet at home, you plug it into your car. These are the typical very basic slow chargers that are provided with some models of the car. You'll get 1.2, 1.5, if you're lucky, two kilowatts of power out of them. Uh, if you upgrade to a 15 amp socket, you might get three kilowatt. If you go to a um, single phase 32 amp plug, like I've put in my other video up here, click to watch on that, you can get as much as mm, seven kilowatt out of a standard Tesla mobile connector. And so generally at shopping centers, look, some will be on single phase and you might get about seven kilowatt. Some will be on three phase and you'll get closer to 12 kilowatt. Now, the other limitation here is not so much in the cable, but the actual onboard charger in your car. A lot of us, well, I did when I first started, I thought the uh, actual box, the actual mobile charger thing, that determined how much charge my car was getting. But no, not true. The actual cables like this, these are just a conduit for the electricity to flow like a river into your car. But the onboard charger, that is what's gonna dictate the maximum AC charging capacity of your car. I'll do a little bit of Googling and we're gonna put some information up here. Another thing we should probably touch on is etiquette, <laughs> public charging etiquette. Destination charging, the kind of thing that you get at a public shopping center, etc. Look, it's effectively free. You're not paying for it, so don't be too demanding. Don't be too entitled. Just don't be a jerk, right? Let's say you're driving and um, all the bays are taken. Oh, well, so be it. If the bay is free, happy days, grab your cable, back your car in or front in depending on where your charge port is, plug it all in, get started uh, and go and do some shopping, come back, have some more free power, you can drive further for nothing, fantastic. The next thing we're going to talk about is about uh, an actual video of me charging my car in the wild today. I didn't video myself plugging in, but here's a video of me unplugging. Right, so no doubt many of you have seen uh, cars charging an electric car charger in things like shopping centers, car parks, and local hardware store. Well, when we get in here, we can see that my car is actually charging up at, uh, what is it, 12 kilowatt. That's not bad. The charge rate will actually be determined by your onboard car charger, not by the cable that you buy. But that said, you don't want to buy a cable that's too low in terms of uh, capacity or in length. My cable's a short one. It's only two and a half uh, meters, but I would recommend you get a five meter one if you're going to buy one. All you've got to do is get a type two connector, this one here. The instructions are on the side. You just push the green button for start, plug one end in there, plug the other end in your car, and off you go. So this is in my Tesla, but if you get the same sort of cable, plug it into your MG4, it's also gonna work for you just fine. Link in the description below, uh, order it, get it delivered, and uh, watch happy days as you get free charging. That's all for today. I hope you've learned a little bit of something new. Basically, public charging is a free service which is generously provided by a lot of shops, cafes, restaurants, wineries, hardware shops, etc. Uh, and it's um, there as, I guess, a bit of a bit of karma. It's good karma. Actually, on the mention of karma and etiquette, which I did touch on before, if you're charging somewhere, um, you know, if you happen to speak to someone who works in the shop, just maybe just mention, say, hey, I think it's great. You've got free charging provided. Uh, I really appreciate it. And look at all the stuff I've bought from you. It's great. Maybe that feedback will go up to management. Maybe they'll put in more free charges for everyone. I can dream anyway. Uh, if you've enjoyed the video, and even if you haven't, please give it a like. Comment if you wanted to ask more information or clarify anything, or if you had any other topics that you would like covered in the future. Um, this is a very new channel. I'm new to the whole video thing. I, I quite enjoy it, having to get over my fear of public uh, speaking and all the rest of it. Anyway, enough about me. Uh, thanks, I'll see you in the next video.